Well, Atalanta um, was born out of the uh, efforts of uh, Fraser Nash. Fraser Nash, around about 1936-ish, uh, decided they were going to start to import cars from BMW and Bradston BMW Fraser Nashes, and, and disp dispensed with the services of their chief engineer, a chap called Alfred Goff. He'd spent some quite, quite some time helping Fraser Nash develop their Meadows engine to do good effect, and, and, and he was a very talented engineer. Um, and they'd, uh, under Fraser Nash, they'd helped him fund a, uh, an engine that was called what's, what's now known as this Goff engine. It was quite an erratic engine uh, in its ultimate form. It had three valves per cylinder, twin spark, uh, selectable supercharged aluminium uh, uh, crankcases um, and it was a powerful engine but it, not particularly reliable, it had water cooled main bearings and that engine went on from, I think it was were used in a number of Fraser Nashes before Goff left there and started up his own motor company with some colleagues. Um, it was only when th those colleagues were joined by two of Fraser Nash's customers uh, where it became known as Atalanta. Atalanta uh, being a derivation of the Greek word atalantos, meaning in balance, which is, which is where all the connection comes. And of course, being independent suspension as well, uh, it had great traction and, and tenacity of handling. Basically what happened, they started the company around about 36, they were joined by a chap called uh, Neil Watson, but also by Peter Whitehead as well, which I think were quite well funded family. And Peter Whitehead went on to get Jaguar the first Le Mans win. Combining the, 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 the motivations of the, of the um, racing drivers, the, the innovation of the engineers behind the scenes, they, 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 they conspired to produce what was believed at the time to be the most technically advanced car they could. The downfall of the company really came in about 1939 for the, for the start of the war. Efforts were turned over to, I believe, genset and um, uh, pump production, which the company then maintained post-war and continued up into the 1990s, as I understand it. I saw an, um, an Atalanta up for sale. I knew what an Atalanta was, obviously, from prior experience. And that uh, was in a provincial auction. I recognised it to be the Le Mans car and um, set about to try and acquire that and at the same time check to make sure I could get a hold of the trademarks and, uh, and register the company. The whole challenge for me was not just to restore the car that was available but to restore a motor company, particularly one with an interesting heritage that nobody had ever really heard of. There's some, there's some great characters involved in, the, in that project pre-war including Bertelli from Aston Martin, Dennis Paul was involved who also went on to run the British motorcycle industry during the 50s and the company did have a number of successes, both ran the cars at Brooklands, it won the Welsh Rally in 1939, the team prize, and, and then also in post-war not a lot of people know about it and I thought it was a great British story to, to, to resurrect. It's a really interesting fusion. What I, what I set out to do was stick to the original ethos of the company, which was to use modern technology where possible, um, lightweight materials, employ a, light, a powerful but light four-cylinder engine to get the original characteristics of a lightweight engine back into the car. And uh, to, in effect, give us a, a traditional vintage British sports car, and because we can't just go and build a special, there isn't an Atalanta chassis lying in every shed around the corner, we had to set about making the Atalanta fit to modern day legislation. And plus expectations of a modern driver, disc brakes, rack and pinion steering. But what I wanted to do was make sure that we didn't do away with the character, retain as much character. So it was really about a paired back experience to make sure that it was, we just got the essence of the driving environment has all the character and all the fun of driving a vintage car from the ones I've driven with a lot of the harshness taken out of it uh, and a little bit of ease put into there and a bit of, bit of practicality.
I was thrilled. I, I, I was doing a lot of comparison of it against um, driving race cars. I'm jumping into this and driving it around the, the airfield here at Vista. Um, I liked it. I thought, I thought it had got a lot of characteristics that I wanted in the car, so I was very pleased with it when I first drove it. What I quickly realised, of course, I was comparing it to a race car, and it's not really a race car. Uh, so we've had to detune a lot of that effort and, and really focused uh, on, on the suspension more than anything else in terms of the sprint rates, the damping, um, some of the geometry revisions on the steering. And, and that's really starting to come alive. We've made big advancements in the last sort of month or so on doing that, and there's, there's still about 20% to go on that. It made an impression on me because I, I've always liked, the reason I'm interested in old cars, I like the, the technology that's been around previously, nothing is ever new. And so that Atalanta particularly always caught, lit my attention for that reason anyway, because of its independent suspension, its clever engine and, and gearboxes and things. And it's the whole romance and the idea of that technical innovation, you know, YT to technology, if you like, going into the war, and then it, this whole story disappearing. So I think for me, um, I felt, because I understood what it was and not many people did, I felt inclined to really be the ambassador for it. Uh, I now own three of the surviving Atalantas. I think there were 20, about, we've identified about 22 cars originally, uh, 26 made potentially originally, but we've identified 22 of them cleanly as clear identities. Um, we estimate to be about seven or eight cars left today. Uh, it really is about revival and um, restoration of a motor company. And what I'm striving to achieve is, is continuity of that. And that's a, a continuous order book, producing a, a nominal amount of cars per year. We really are only wanting to produce about 12 a year, maximum anyway. We hope to ramp up to that over the next, next couple of years. Can't see any reason why that won't be from the strength of inquiries we have had. Um, what I would say is that we have a platform there that we've developed, and Atalanta did have a post-war history too, in the form of the RGS Atalanta. And that had a whole other set of innovations attached to it. And, I'm looking to evolve that at some point in the future.